my opinions in snooker, I tell them that this billiard room is the finest room in the southern hemisphere. land, the Wurundjeri tribe, and we recognise their elders, both past, present and emerging. And we do that because this land on which we stay is very much part of the tradition of Victoria, and all Victorians are part of that tradition. We thank the sponsors Endeavour Life Care, Reed Furniture, Silex Ergonomics, Lock Logistics, Mount Compass Golf Course, Hanging Rock Winery, Resolution Imaging, Aussie Fresh, Allcocks, Strawn, RMF and Consolidated Leisure and Sport. And without those people, our sport would not exist and it certainly would not be at the standard that this has been throughout this week. So we thank everybody. Uh, we're excited. <laughs> so, one hour to find out who is the World Billiards Champion for 2019. I leave you in the very capable hands of your referee, Kim Ivan. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to the final session of the 2019 Endeavour Life Care World Billiards Championships from the RACV Club in Melbourne, Australia. My name's David Pitt and I'm here in commentary with uh, New Zealand champion Wayne Kerry. Hello Wayne, welcome to the commentary. Hello Mr David Pitt, lovely to be here. Such an important moment and time as people can see the score, 949 to 917, and Peter Gilchrist is currently the table on 14. And to get there, he got a sensational 300 plus, didn't he, David? We had a fabulous second session here. Uh, Seraf Kathari uh, opened up a lead in the first session with a 279 uh, and a, a, a couple of other breaks. Peter Gilchrist didn't manage a, a century in that first session and uh, was sitting about 300 behind with. Uh, 20 minutes or so to go in the second session and uh, a big break to Surav then uh, at that point could have really made uh, things extremely difficult for Peter but a beautiful 303 from uh, from Peter has actually seen him hit the front uh, coming to this last session so we're set for uh, a promoter's dream here really with uh, with the, the current uh, the defending world champion Surav Kathari playing against the world number one Peter Gilchrist our referee for the final is uh, Kim Ivette who uh, I understand has just been promoted uh, today as a class one referee. And she's been here all week uh, refereeing as have all the, uh, the visiting and local referees uh, doing a wonderful job. Um, and uh, we couldn't have anybody better in charge of this. Difficult situation for him, uh, Peter Wayne. What's he gonna try and do here? Well, clearly he's, I would say he was run, run out some hazards to get his arm mm. flowing. Mm. And then he would, I would say, Put the red and get himself in position to go in off mm. the white mm. to bring it out of pork. Mm. Difficult recovery from here though, isn't it? And as you say, I think the main idea is just to get the arm moving, get sure. the arm flowing, you know, get a few hazards, just, you know, run down the clock a little bit and uh, and, and just, you know, every point counts in this with one only one hour to go. And usually we're playing a, a one hour session for this final session. Oh, he'd be disappointed with that, well, but again, actually, then again he'd be... Yeah. <laughs> He would be disappointed with the red going in, but then after the the, the uh, yellow missed, he'd be happy. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's a it's a funny comment uh, that. Uh, but already yeah. he's working on looks like he's looking for two pot reds. Yep. But the red goes on mm. to the middle mm. spot, mm. and then you play the yeah. cannon. This is actually a preferable yeah. position that he's finished up in, uh, potting the red off the spot than uh, than playing hazard. So uh, yeah, first first stroke of luck in the uh, in the final session to Peter to Peter Gilchrist. <coughs> And I did remark, or made the comment earlier, that it was actually just wasn't getting his fair share of the run of the ball. Mm. Well, of course, the tie could have turned there, and he certainly, he certainly is. But everybody, mm. when you're watching mm. this, look, mm. watch these mm. players, watch mm. the way they cue, watch mm. their elbow. Mm. Only their elbow moves. Mm. Mm. It, it, the elbow doesn't drop it. Mm. It's worked as an axis for these players on, on 95% of the shots. He's having a good look. Do you think he might uh, play the five shot here, uh, Wayne? 
No, I don't. Well, good call, Wayne. Yeah. That's why you're the 18-time New Zealand champion and I'm a mug, because you knew what was going on and, uh, and I didn't. Yeah. So yeah, nice no, controlled uh, slow yeah. shot there from uh, from. Well, I would say Peter. he's going to put the red in a position here after the sin off mm. and then he can, he can stun, the, mm. stun the white. Mm. Uh, sorry, stun his yellow, mm. put the red in the middle, stun the yellow and go in off the white next. Mm. Yeah, That's how I see the shot. Yeah. No, he doesn't like it. So he's running out, um, I'm not sure how many, does anyone know how many? He was on 38, he so he started off uh, 14, he started off, he? He, yeah, he started 14. off on 14, so he, he, he must be, uh, he must have run quite a few hazards here, haven't been keeping track of that ourselves, we have excellent pro score scoring system that we're using here for the World Championship, um, which is used around the world for billiards and snooker, uh, shows you nearly everything, but the only thing it doesn't show you is the number of hazards. Rather difficult for the uh, for the operator to uh, to keep keep track of that as well. But um. well, here we go. He's going again. He's going to run out. I would say the two pots, and, and and then work in the cannon. So the two pots on the red. Or is he going to stun up to the little pocket here? Yeah. No. He's going to play the two pots, and I would suggest he's going to stop on the line. There is seven look now. Yep. Having a look now. Just to see red. the angle for a cannon. Sure. Play so the probably cannon. Probably just. Stun this red a little bit. Um, I would say he'd run off the back cushion. He'd run off the back cushion. <coughs> we'll see. Yeah. Oh yes. Yep, that's ran off it. Come over, come over here slightly. He this is actually me. a favourite shot of his now because yeah. I think he's going to play this cannon off the book. Uh, off the book cushion. The cushion. Yes, yeah, which will, which will bring the, the bring the, the white back into play. So yes. this is actually a trademark uh, shot of uh, of Pretty Hill Chris. And the red comes to meet the white. Yeah. The red has two cushions. Yep. Comes around towards the middle pocket, oh. middle right pocket, and the so, white will come yeah. down. Oh, Ooh, just caught the jaw. He'd be disappointed with that. He would. Yeah, he'd be yeah. very disappointed with that. So that uh, that shot, he, he explained that shot to my great mate, our mate uh, Jason Colebrook, yeah. uh, one time uh, yeah. sitting in the airport waiting for a plane. And uh, Peter and uh, Jason were chatting about billiards, and uh, Peter showed him that shot, not on the table, but just on the back of a napkin in the airport. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jason came back immediately and said, Oh, there's this great shot of Peter Gilchrist. It is. Well, it's it's David, it one of David Cause's yeah. favourite shots. Yes, he, yes. David yeah. Cause is another, he's yeah. brilliant at that mm. shot. Yeah, no, it's a very good shot because, mm. you know, the normal thing, the obvious thing to do is to play the direct cannon, but by playing it off the ball cushion, you're actually developing the white uh, yeah. out into the centre of the table. So uh, here we're about to see uh, one of Surav's strengths. He's a great potter, and if he can pot this red, which he's oh, right a into the center, a wonderful pot, and uh, he's screwed into the, into the side cushion, stunned into the cushion to leave himself and in off uh, white. So a lovely yeah. opening from a difficult position there. That's, uh, now, David, that's um, my spies tell me mm. that uh, Manaj Kathari, Sarev's father, mm. they've been playing a lot of snooker lately together mm -hmm. back mm. in India. Yep. And the idea is to improve Sarev's potting. Okay. And it's certainly mm. shown up there, didn't it? Mm. Don't forget. Mm. Man Manaj Kathari himself mm. yeah. was a world champion. So yeah. father and son have both been world champions. Mm. Mm. He doesn't like this, it's a little wide. It is a bit wide. Yeah. And the, the issue is not so much getting the in off, but just the pace on the yellow as to whether yeah. he, he doesn't he want puts to lose it. it back into, into he, he, yeah, he doesn't want yeah. to lose it back into Bork. So he could do it you know, at triple strength and put it in out of Bork uh, again. Uh, that's a very difficult shot. This is no snack. This is a very wide forcer here. Oh no. It, just he was a bit skittery, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, just it was a very wide. Well, his cue was in line with the balk line there, and that's a that's a very uh, a very tough shot, you know. Uh, yeah, the other reason why he might have taken the yellow, mm. David, is mm. that he moved it away from the cushion. Yep. And normally, if you take a shot like that, you may not leave anything. Yep. yep. But it looks like yep. this, there was a touch here. Yeah. So in the end, that uh, forcing it off the red was really a shot to nothing because with Peter, you know, almost on the balk cushion. He has to play a very good shot to get in here. Uh, I would say a very he, good he, he will, he will Oh, what he's a good shot it. that is. Yeah. Oh, a good shot. Mm -hmm. But he's still in trouble. He's, he's still in trouble. It's not a gimme here. Mm. So if he was to pot the <coughs> red mm. and hit the mm. left-hand mm. fork, come out and he mm. might even get the cannon, he might be playing for both mm. here.
So the final here tonight at the uh, RACV Club in Melbourne is uh, the culmination of a, a week of fantastic billiards that we've seen here at this wonderful club. It's, it's a, a fabulous uh, venue, not just for billiards, but for hospitality and accommodation. Uh, the club with its beautiful eight Alcock antique uh, billiard tables. Uh, and uh, and uh, oh, I think that jumped out of the back of the pocket. Second time it oh, happened. That's the second time that's happened to Peter in this match, which wow. is... Uh, which is, uh, which is, yeah. which, yeah. that jumped out the side of the back. He had one down here, at the number, on the number four pocket, and now he's had one jump out on the number six pocket. So, um, terribly bad luck there for Peter. He hit that into the middle of the pocket. And, and, and you've uh, got to pay kudos yeah. to Sarab there, because he, he, he actually had a look at the pocket and mm. spoke to Peter saying, yeah. that's the sportsmanship of this particular yeah, sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually said, gee, yeah, mate, so, that was, that look, was bad luck. He needs a draw here. Ooh, stroke of luck there for... Uh, May not yeah, oh, wonderful. Right Thanks, Dan. Wonderful yeah. camera work there from our producer, Dan Lynch, from Cube Ball TV, just giving us a, a replay there of that ball. Hitting the... Not hitting the jaws at all, but just going straight into the... Uh, into the leather... Uh, leather... Um, uh, over the... At the back of the pocket. And uh, the ball, which was actually off the table because uh, of the force with, with, with which it was hit, um, it was in the air when it hit there and came straight back out. And in the first session, Peter had a similar shot, which was uh, a, a, a forcing pot read right into the top left-hand pocket as we look at it. And again, that jumped uh, out of the back of the pocket. Uh, he hit both those shots extremely hard, but it doesn't matter how hard you hit them, yeah. uh, they should be going and he staying down in the pocket. So, uh, so just, uh, just a, a bit of bad luck there. Nice shot there from uh, Sirav. He's... Uh, <coughs> Left the wide over the middle, and he's got a chance of um, uh, a chance of getting off the red here. Oh, that shot's being kind to Sarav. So, so mm -hmm. the advantage to uh, Surav here, um, sure. Wayne? Yep, I would say it's a stop shot and you're going off the yellow next mm. and manoeuvre it for the mm. drop cannon. So as I was saying, Wayne, we've had a wonderful week of billiards here at the RECV Club. We've had all the top players in the world playing here. Um, the absolute cream has risen to the top here with the defending champion of the world uh, number one uh, in the honestly in it's been second to uh, none here yeah, David yeah. Well, speaking to all the players second yeah, to none yeah. do you know mm -hmm. that for everyone listening there's three one thousand break players here incredible isn't it it's incredible yeah, now, yeah. Um, obviously there's been Mike Russell who's had a, who's had a, a 11.37 Pankers Varney on memory's had a, a thousand and ninety two but the man you're watching there sitting down at present, Mr. Peter Gilchrist, he has had a 1346 and also a 1000 dead in Ireland a couple mm. of years ago. Now, with the 1346, I was actually there, it was in New Zealand, 2007, was down in Hamilton. And I can tell you now, we sat there and watched an awe. He got into trouble twice, David, in the 900s. Mm -hmm. Ugly trouble. Mm. Pulled off two sensational shots and away he went. Oh, fantastic. That oh, must be wonderful yeah. to watch. I've never seen a, a thousand break Wayne and, uh, and very few people have. But I have met uh, eight players who have made a thousand break in, uh, in match play. Wow. Which is incredible. So I've wow. met the... Uh, the, the, the oops. Um, I've met the uh, the four that have made them since the uh, uh, since the uh, reversion to the two pot rule in 1983, which is the, the three that you mentioned, plus sure. Geet Setti, who, who made a 1276 mm -hmm. in 1992. Uh, I've also met um, Michael Ferreira, who you would know well, yes. um, from India, who made uh, I think 1149 under the three pot rule um, in the 70s, and I also met both. Uh, Clark McConaughey and Horace Lindrum from a previous year in billiards, both of whom were multiple thousand break players. So, uh, big thrill for me to meet those players. We've just seen, we've just seen a um, an extraordinary uh, shot there from Surav. He really put his shoulder into that one, I think, 
and yes. uh, Mr. Mr. Pot off the spot. And I don't think I've seen him miss, miss a pot off the spot all week. He's been Mr. Reliable uh, in terms of that shot. But, you know, here we are in the last hour of a World Championship match. Uh, 40 the difference. Uh, the defending champion playing last year's runner-up. And, of course, uh, you know, if they didn't feel a bit of pressure, they wouldn't be human. A nice yeah. opening for Peter here. So just a good test of curing a, 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 a stun shot, which you could play quite firmly. Probably hit a little bit too hard to, to leave the uh, wide over there, but he'd be just happy to be in play here. I, I think he can get in off the red. Uh, can't be sure with the with the camera angle uh, about these angles, but it looks as though with, he can get this one with check side. I think he'll milk the red for a little yeah. while. So nice and slow. He'll just yeah. try to put that near the pink spot. Now he can... Um, bring the red back up uh, over the middle pocket or near the white uh, to recover the white. We'll see how this goes. So Sarah was even the good chance there and uh, missing the Look, look at his spot. queuing actually, yeah, but he yeah, just look, watch the yeah. elbow, it hardly drops, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Beautiful, so he's hit that. Yeah. He's beautiful, that beautiful, beautiful. Well, well, beautiful pace, I'll just kiss together and uh, there's the five or six different ways of playing sure. this cannon. This, um, this, is, this is one of those shots <coughs> where you're going to score, mm. but what actually do you manufacture mm. from that shot? Mm. So this will be interesting to see how it works. Oh, that's clever. Just do a little... Oh, no, he's out he of position. He split them a bit. He, yeah, he split no, he them did. a bit. Yeah, that's not, that's not ideal. No. He would, have, he would have preferred, obviously, to keep both balls in front of him there. So it's a little bit tricky, this well, He's this going to play the here. check yeah. side. He's yeah. going to get play the cannon. Work yeah. on that. Well, he's just grazed the white. That's yeah. a courageous shot there because... Uh, yeah. you know, and it's he, out of pork. And he's left it out of book, which is yeah. actually brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 45 minutes to go, world. All the people around the world watching this. 45 minutes, 45 and 6 seconds, 5 oh. seconds, 4 seconds. 45 minutes to go to be world champion. How would you be feeling at this stage, David? <laughs> well, I think I'd be a tad nervous. Wayne, I don't know about you. Just be, oh, just be loving well, every minute of it. just into that. But it's clever. He's got Look, away with it. Yeah, it's he's clever. got a cannon coming back. I now on this cannon, like he's going to knock out, keep the white out of ball. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, he's just going to yeah. braise the red yeah. for it in off a pot. Mm. Wonderful billiards. Mm. And ladies and gentlemen, this just looks so easy, and it is mm. not. Mm. See, so he's, he's having to lift the back lift, end yep, slightly. Just to yep. throw it a bit wide. Yep. He wants to just leave the red behind. No, he pushed it across the table. Okay, exactly. that's a safer play. Um, he could have played a very delicate shot there, but this is probably not the time for extreme delicacy. You know, you've got to yeah, make probably sure a wider you angle than we realised as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So simple enough here. Plenty of side to take it into the pocket. Just keeping the balls in front of him. So again, as you said a moment ago, Wayne, a position here where it's very easy to score, but uh, what do you leave? You know, you, a couple of different ways of playing this. He's, he's taking the red up no and down the table. Normally the pros play these very soft. Mm. And if even they get it wrong, mm. they can manufacture another mm. shot. GC made a liar out of me. So he played that quite firm. He did, he did. But he's left himself uh, a thin enough in the middle. Now, w would he be able to put this down behind the black spot? Yeah, if or down behind with the, the bottom run spot. Through, he can do yeah. that. Is he just going to go, go thin? How's he going to play it? Yeah, yep. That's clear to see. He's doubled up the shot. Let's yep. <coughs> yeah. have a two bites of the cherry here. Yeah. About this one. So you can see uh, some of the crowd uh, is sitting over there on, on the side of the table, but at both ends of the table, we've uh, installed grandstands here at the RECV, and we've got a, a full house tonight, uh, probably 140 or 150 people uh, paying customers in here for for this uh, World Billiards final. So just another example of uh, the, uh, the, the wonderful support we've had from the RECV club and the hard work that the organisers uh, have put into this championship. Would you say that particular shot Dave has now made Peter Gilchrist's favourite? Not just Although this is yet. quite an Not just yet. Yeah. This okay. one's a bit smelly. Yeah. You know, the 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 if he if he was four hundred in front, he'd be just potting the red here. But I think you'll find that he's going to uh well, oh, he did play the courageous shot. Yeah. That's a tremendous billiards. So billiards is a game of courage. As Horace yeah. Lindham said, it's uh it's fifty percent skill. 50% luck and 50% and nerves and you've got to hold your nerve and, and play the difficult shot if that's the one that's going to lead you to good position and that's exactly what Peter's done here. He's now got perfect top of the table from a, in two shots from a, a, a slightly tricky position so 
Uh, if he can knock in a, a big break here, uh, it's, it's going to make, thing, make things very difficult for, um, for Sura with the clock ticking away as it is. Well, I, as I just mentioned you earlier, I thought when he was on that red, I, mm. I made him a hot favourite to win mm. it. Mm. And to where he is right now, he'd have to be favourite. Oh, he's just drawn um, that back a, a few inches. Nice and close into the, uh, into the balls, but with enough room to, to run through smoothly without any trouble. Coming off the top cushion. Possibly not quite far enough on the red, so he's faced with a choice of a th <coughs> thin, very thin cut red, which would be a very risky shot. Or he's safety first, he's just going to go off it. Off. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah. it's up to the yeah. 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 So. He could be in no man's land here, and he is. Yeah, he's, he's in an ugly position. He's, he's got the long loser to play. Finished with a long loser. It's yeah. surprising uh, how often these players, the modern players, miss long losers. And the reason is not that they're they're, they're, they're uh, inferior at them, but they only play one about every half an hour. So uh, if you're playing long losers all the time and you've got your eye in, then uh, it's an easy shot. But if you only play one every half an hour, uh, it's not so easy. So Peter's hit that absolutely into yeah. the centre of the pocket there. And he's back um, in the favourism again. Brought the red around into a beautiful yeah. cannon position. He'll just uh, play gently, uh, slightly thicker than half ball off the red, drop onto the white, and the red will just go into the corner. <coughs> <coughs> Ideally for a pot, but if it's for a pot or an off, it doesn't matter. He couldn't have played that any better, Wayne. Yeah, no, oh. look, he's just got a nice angle there to come out, yeah. pop the red, come yeah. off two questions yeah. for, the, for the next pot or the next cannon. <coughs> Stunned back, I think. Done the years yeah, yeah. So the modern, the modern players are, are, are very confident with their stun shots. In in times past, that would have been played with side off two cushions, but uh, nowadays these top players are such great potters that uh, you know they're confident of, of just stunning up off the off the top cushion, more like a snooker shot. Now watch watch mm. watch the spots on the yellow here. Mm. Now and see if it spins. See the spin he's putting on that yeah, ball to, yeah. to make it work differently. Mm -hmm. So, and this is the beauty of the spots. They're wanting the, the spots to be played, the white spot ball, with the professional snooker players, but they won't have it for some reason. Mm. And it's a shame because we would be able to see oh, what magic I, I think doing. I absolutely agree with you yeah. there, Wayne. I think it would be a great innovation for snooker. I understand that they did actually... Uh, introduce it or tried to introduce it a couple of seasons ago but they didn't consult the players the players walked in and saw the spotted balls and said no we're not playing with those because they hadn't been consulted which was uh, which was quite right but if they had consulted with the players and said look these are the what we're going to be using from next year um, I'm sure the players would have been fine for it, with it because they understand that it's making the game more understandable to the viewing audience now particularly on TV because with these close-up type of shots, um, you can see exactly what's what's going on. Slightly tricky position yeah. here for Peter. He's covered the, uh, the 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 billiard spot with the uh, with the white ball. So now his ball has gone up onto the pyramid spot, and he's going to have to uh, just play a nice uh, a nice slow pot uh, off the red here uh, to try and leave himself uh, straight. On, on the red, which will enable him to uh, re revert to the top of the table. We'll see how he does it. Yeah, he's hit that nicely. Ooh, okay. just, oh, that's, yeah. no, that's yeah, not too bad, it's not too no, bad, is it? because yeah. now he can yeah. manufacture the yep. going off the red. Yep. Manuf then that was a really yep. clever shot. Yeah. Yeah. This is why these guys are so good. Mm. That's a, he can now manufacture the red yeah. for oh, one of the middle yeah. pockets with an in off, yeah. so and then he's down the top yeah. again. Yeah, what a great player Peter Gilchrist has been over the yeah, years. Great uh, first, well. uh, first, first played in a world final at the age of 20. Uh, he's played now, this is the 11th world final. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's 52 now. And uh, he's just been an ornament to the game, uh, both on and off the table. He's always ready to, uh, to help out with publicity or with uh, you know, talking to fans and supporters and, uh, and to you know, play in as many tournaments as, as he possibly can. He's been to Australia any number of times and also to New Zealand. So if you, uh, if you put a billiard tournament on and he can fit it into a schedule, uh, Peter will be there. He's uh, a, wonderful, uh, a wonderful ornament to the game. Wonderful ambassador, uh, he really is. Suro equally so. Uh, yes. Wonderful, uh, an ornament to the game. Uh, playing, I think, in only his second uh, world world championship final. Of course, he's a defending champion, having beaten Peter in the final last year. Beautiful controlled shot there, <laughs> Wayne from Peter, just coming within a couple of inches of the spot, but on a on a beautiful angle. 
and he's just having a look to see whether he wants to screw off this one or, or follow it through. See what develops. Lovely soft it's screw soft. this. Yeah. Just got to pinch the ball, don't you, on those ones. He's done that with uh, with side to to leave himself a nice angle. Beautiful display of, of, of cumanship and uh, control of the, of the white yeah. ball. He's a beautiful player to watch. Yes. Really yes. one of the most attractive players to watch uh, in the game. Well, that's another thing with Peter too. You could take him home to meet your mother. <laughs> He's just a really, really nice guy. As most of these players are, I might add. And I'm pretty sure you could do the same with Sarad. Oh, Sarad. a gentleman. Total gentleman, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, interesting to just plot their path through the uh, through the tournament. Uh, as I said, we've had you know all the top players in the world here, and uh, Sirav came through the knockout section and uh, and then beat Robert Hall of England in the quarter final, and then a great victory over over Mike Russell of England in the semi final with breaks of uh, 205 and four other centuries. Uh, Peter came through in the other half of the draw, uh, beating Drew Sitwala comfortably with a. Of several centuries in a 200, a couple of 200s in that game, and then in, and in the semi-final in a tremendous match against David Corsier, uh, Peter with 101, 207, 123, 305, 137 and 174, uh, overcame uh, David, who only had two centuries, by uh, 1183 to 1023, so that was really... Uh, Almost the match of the tournament that uh, that semi-final and um, um, uh, really good to watch. Now this tricky position, Wayne. What's what's yeah, going on? You go you go behind. Oh, he's going to run through. I think he's, he's going to use think the he's push, pushing, the stay out. Pushing. Oh, that's a lovely yeah. shot. Yeah, using the to keep right out. And, uh, yeah, following through, beautiful smooth carrying. To Looks uh, like. Um, what would he do here? Prop the red, or would he play yeah. another cannon? And well, he's, uh, as, as Dan Lynch, our producer, has just pointed out, he's, he's got to cross the walk line. So this is actually on 85, so uh, being on 85, so this is actually a good opportunity for him to do that. But he's done very smoothly, just a firm firm stroke, bringing his ball round. Possibly it's come a little bit too far. We'll see where it finishes. Uh, I'd have to say that's the A1 decision, Wayne. I don't know about you. I, um, mm. I just... Yeah, um, and of course he, he's, he's just flow through this. Oh, I know mm. he's going to go in off. It must be. Yeah. So he's going to be he's going to play one and off yeah, and another. Just, and just off. a little soft one. Yep. And, and there's another one to bring it up for a drop cannon. So smooth sailing for Peter. Uh, 90 to go and a lead now of about 130. The clock's ticking down. 34 minutes. This this break could, uh, if he can uh, push this on up to towards the 200 mark, uh, could could be uh, very instrumental in, in determining the result of this match. That's a nice shot. No risks. Taking it in and out of walk uh, over to the other side of the table uh, where he's almost bound uh, to have a, uh, either a, a in off in the middle or a drop cannon. He's just playing a, a nice slow in off into, into the middle just to leave a drop, drop cannon. cannon. Lovely shot there. Yeah. I think he played that with a little bit of drag just to slow everything down and uh, make sure that the object white didn't move too far. And now he's absolutely in A1 position to return to the top of the table with a drop cannon. But uh, as you and I both know well, Wayne, drop cannons can be uh, can be tricky. Can be There's tricky. There's always yes. that scope for getting a, a smother or uh, them not going quite right. <coughs> it's uh, a little awkward, isn't it? Yeah, uh, a little. He, like he would prefer to have hit that a little bit harder and bounce the red off the cushion to leave a straight uh, a, a straight pot. Uh, he may have a skinny in off the red, but it's. Uh, that's no snack. We'll see what he does. Uh, he may try to draw. I don't know. He looks as though he's, know, he's going, he's going this. Yeah, So just a shot with pace control. Uh, that one. Just make sure you bring the red out uh, sufficiently far to leave uh, to leave uh, it off for the next shot. Again, this looks a bit wide. He may need to take this one in and out of walk. Yeah, it's hard from this camera angle, mm, although it, mm, look, it looks, mm. he's making that, it looks mm. like he's going to force it right, mm. he just took it wider, uh, narrower. Yeah. He doesn't want to jaw. Oh, he does not want to jaw. He's got lucky there. He's got lucky. Yeah, could easily have caught slightly deeper into the jaw and squirted back across the top of the ball cushion then, but it's come out absolutely perfectly uh, just in front of the D and uh, and uh, a couple of little breaks that have gone Peter's way this um, 
yes. in this session, and uh, that 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 could be t that could be very telling. Because Kim Avet's doing a lovely job to the referee. Yes, very good, and uh, I understand that she's the first woman to uh, referee a World uh, Billiards Championship final, Wayne, That's which is a tremendous, uh, tremendous achievement for her. Uh, she's been dedicated to, uh, you know, refereeing now in, in Australia for, in Melbourne and in Australia for um, well, many years now. Uh, not too many, but, uh, but many. And uh, she's, uh, she's a highly experienced and capable referee and thoroughly deserves uh, this, uh, this honour that she's been given of refereeing this world final. So uh, it's, it's great to see Kim uh, in action and doing such a good job. Nice little shot there from uh, Peter, just leaving an angle on the red for a soft screw cannon back uh, back towards the white. Or so would he miss the cannon? So he gives himself top of the table position. A bit risky perhaps? Just oh, I think that's, I, 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 yeah. that, that would be a brave shot. If he does that, he's a super no, genius. You're correct, that's what yeah, he done. Yeah. He played that. Mm. Now, Sarav's sitting there, so what do you think Sarav is saying to himself? Oh, Sarav's got to just uh, compose himself. Uh, he can't do anything while he's sitting down. One of the, one of the, uh, one of the features of billiards that distinguishes from other sport is that uh, you take the other player's table time. And, uh, and it's possible in a match for, for you know, a really top player to, to take 80 or 90% of the table time. And when you're sitting down, there's absolutely nothing you can do. What you have to do is just compose yourself, wait for your turn, and when your turn does come, which it will do, then be ready to take it. And as we saw in the second session, Peter was sitting down, sitting down, sitting down. His opportunity arose and he made a lovely 300 to get back into the game. And, and now it's swung his way, but exactly the same thing applies to Surav. Um, Surav's just got to sit there, be patient, wait his turn. If it doesn't come, then there's nothing he can do about it, but if it d does come, he has to be ready. He has to be ready to take a, take advantage of uh, of any opening that Peter leaves him. And of course, Peter's very aware that if he mm. makes a mistake, mm. Sarav could mm. easy mm. Oh, overtake Sarav. him. And Sarav's a comeback king. I mean, every, many people will remember the semi-final in the World Championship last year, where he was down uh, down 500 against one of the modern greats in David Corsier, who's uh, is an absolute juggernaut of uh, of scoring. And uh, and Sura have knocked in a 300, got back into that game, and ended up winning that match and going on to uh, the semi-final. Yeah. So it's been great chatting here with you, yeah, Wayne. Thank uh, you very uh, much. The match is poised at a, a very interesting position, and we're going to hand over now in commentary to the the doyen of billiards commentary in Australia, which is uh, Peter Tankard, and then uh, also his professional counterpart, who has uh, commentated professionally for billiards and snooker all around the world, Robbie Faldvari. The ambassador for the event, and, and also the a three times world champion, three, three times Robin world Ferrari. champion, and the resident professional at the RACV club. Thank you, Wayne. This is David Pitt signing off, and we're going to have a very exciting last half hour here. Down there. Thank you, David. Thank you, Wayne. And uh, Robbie is just getting set to join us here. Uh, obviously, the most exciting stage of the entire week. Um, promoter's dream, the world reigning billiards champion, Saraf Qatari, versus the number one ranked player, Peter Gilchrist, in a repeat of last year's final. And uh, tremendously exciting stage of the match. Peter, currently dominant on 134, has had a couple of lucky breaks, Robbie. Yes, glad to be with you, Peter. You're a good friend and a, and a real doyen of the sport in terms of knowledge. Um, yeah, anything can happen still, but it's close. It's getting to the stage where Gilchrist is going to have to miss quite soon for Surav to have a chance. At what point do you call it? Listen, I'm not calling anything. For a few times in my career, I thought I'd had it won, and you did. You to my I told match. You, you had it won. Five, yeah, you right. told me I had it won at five minutes to go with 91 in Fiat. Nathwaite, ooh. 
who then raced around the table and managed to close out on a hundred breaks. So, 100 break. in theory, you can five minutes per hundred is uh, quite is feasible, but five minutes, you know, per hundred for five, four, <laughs> four cent, you know, four times five, twenty minutes. So, four, yep. anything is possible, but you know, yes. that was a that was a hundred thousands yes. of one nearly. Yes, it was. But but it's been done before. I mean, yep. if Sorov is the comeback king, yeah. as Dave mentioned. Yeah, earlier. and if Qatar, if you play fast at top of the table, you can make it in three minutes. Uh, really? 100. Yeah, you can. I mean, perfect top of the table, floating yes, wide. Yes, yes, yes. Close. But anyway, Peter so Gilchrist nearly got perfect, and he's yes. he's going to, if he stays here. Yes. What would be perfect, Robbie? Just slightly offset? Yeah, well, that's the floating white position that uh, we've become accustomed to. Murdo Donahue taught me that one, um, and uh, Russell's perfected it, uh, as well as Peter. Just off the straight, knock it back up and down. At the moment, it's heading towards Postman's Knock. Just bring the white straight down onto the top cushion, as he's trying to do. But Peter normally tries to get it off that cushion, but he's hit that safely let's put it that way normally he'd hit it yes, softer yes so he's he's left the in off which he, you don't really want to do you want to stay at the top of the table uh but he's got and that's what happens it's a it's so not he's perfect a little, now no, he's he's it's a narrow cannon isn't yeah. it and it's a forcing in off so yeah things can go wrong here it's a it's a hobson's choice here sorry australian expression meaning no good choice <laughs> There is the shot forcing it off. A perfect shot will bring it right back to the middle of the table, forcing it into the left-hand bottom pocket. But the, you're so tempted to play a thin cannon and just hope for the best in this situation. But he's, he's going to play the right shot. He's playing and the forcer, uh, so he'll hit the top cushion, yeah. side cushion, walk and cushion, and come back. And in the previous commentary that I did make, that's the art of billiards, to try and play the right shot. They both weren't playing the right shot at the start of the tournament uh, final. That's it. Now, there is this guy. It's <coughs> come a bit. Just making it a it's bit come awkward. come a bit more. He might even go for the pot and cannon here just to stay yeah, on the five table. Shot just to but the real shot is once again just pot the red. But that's pretty, uh, you know. I think most people you could would forgive be him tempted. for just wanting to yeah. hold the table at yeah, this stage. Could I you not? I think so. Oh, yeah, you're, and he did a, that. You're and a good judge, Robbie. He's, he, so he's elected to play a, a looser shot, but in the hope of having the uh, cannon come to his rescue, which is exactly what's happened. But will, so, he, but will he pay the penalty now, Peter? Because now he's got a difficult shot. Yes. It's going to catch up with you at the, in the end. It's called the snowball effect. Yep. Um, but plenty of top spin. Some juice on this one, side, right-hand side. Yep. Yes. Needs it to touch that jaw. Touch oh, that lovely jaw. Jaw. Well, not only that, that's the play a little cannon here, nearly get top of the table in one shot. He can clean and he is going he normally does we saw it in the last match when it comes to the crunch. Slow down, make sure he's got everything right. So not quite top of the table, but should do him. And there we have part of the audience. Full house at the RACV club in Melbourne. Oh, I can vouch it's a great club. Uh, here quite regularly and they've done their utmost to make this a great tournament along with the organising yes. committee, uh, which, Peter, you're a part of. Yes, and standing behind us in the commentary booth, we have the wonderful genius players from Myanmar. We can say pretty much what we want, Robbie, because they don't have a word of English between them, but uh, they are all genuine geniuses. Uh, well, the Nico opponent Uru, who... Uh, yeah, Kya. the nightmare continues. I see them everywhere. That's well, right. He's the man who... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. You're having nightmares. Are, no, he, he's very nice to me now. He's a very know. nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, now he's nice to <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you. Having, no, having gained your scalp. 
to be honest, it's great to see them here. Um, They're fantastic. I was asked to coach there years ago, and they just played billiards there yeah. 20, 30 years ago. Yes. Only billiards, no snooker. Yes. Um, and now it's come along in leaps and bounds. They had a major tournament there a couple well, of months ago. They've hosted the last two IBSF World right. Championships. So, um, so yes, they're, they're, they're eager to make their mark on the world stage. So getting to a critical point in the match now, we have a lead of 100, 210 to Peter Gilchrist. Uh, by Robbie's calculations, if he can hold the table for another 10 minutes, he will be the 2019 World Billiards Champion. And if he scores during that 10 minutes, that might in fact be 15 minutes. Um, we might have to call it the 15 minute mark if he's, uh, if he's still at table. Because while he's piling them on, every point he puts on now is a point uh, that Sorov is not scoring and a point he has to make up. And also, also the big thing is Peter Gilchrist has won this world championship. If he, if he, was, uh, if he hadn't won it before, he might be a bit more nervous. So in that regard, uh, he's even got more control of this match. Uh, he's not going to be as nervous as a first-time winner. Well, both of them have got experience. I mean, this was last year's final. As I say, this is just like, it's like billiards heaven for us, us uh, tragics because we get to see here in Australia uh, exactly what we didn't see last year in England and we get to live stream it out to the rest of the world courtesy of the dedication of Mr. Dan Lynch. Interestingly, yeah. I was talking to Dan earlier during the break uh, and Dan um, is streaming uh, snooker, pool and billiards and he's developed something of an affection for billiards. Uh, he's understanding the shots. Yeah. He's had to be forced to listen to us in commentary <laughs> <laughs> and uh, drone on about drop cannons and uh, short oh, jennies. Drone but on. Well. Give yourself a break. But look, I've been fortunate. I've, did, I've done commentary with uh, Dan at pool and snooker. And I, I must say, his, uh, his production has so the, been improved yeah, every year, really. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now he's going to be a billiard player, apparently. Well, we need, to, we need to induct him into the ranks. Uh, I mean, this, this is a game that requires, uh, it's true, some degree of learning and skill, but it's one that keeps paying back. We've got a lot of guys in this championship in their 50s and 60s and one or two even beyond that. And you can't say that for other Q sports. So effectively, your, your snooker career as a pro is over as you approach 40. Uh, business players rely on knowledge and um, observation, perhaps more than in other sports, because there are so many different scoring options. So we carry our knowledge forward for years to come. So uh, for all of you aging snooker and pool players that think your career is over, uh, welcome to billiards. All right, thin cannon with left hand side. He doesn't want to get too far under it. Oh, he, oh, he did get too nearly, far under it. Got a little screw cannon there back, so. Would have preferred to keep them both in course, front of him, I yeah, guess. We yeah, we saw him do a few nursery cannons the uh, beforehand, yes. and that was the way to get them, yes. as uh, uh, my Walter predecessor. Would have said. <laughs> yeah, my predecessor. Here we predecessor. go, PK. Yeah, he's so down on it, so he does. Only because he doesn't want to play the push shot. Total control. Well played. So, still going. In the front row there, the bald head on the right is Andrew Ricketts, the author of uh, Billiards Phenomenon, the Walter Lindrum biography. Yes, I had the pleasure of speaking with him at Dolly Lindrum's funeral, and it was a, it was a heart-wrenching little uh, speech he made about and involved the history of the game. I don't know. I don't know if he really plays, but he, he does play. And in fact, he, he he said he made his first century break in practice just uh, two months ago. Oh, really? Well, yeah, there's yeah. a there's an answer for you. It's never too late. And and he has. I don't know whether you heard David say this. He has the twin of this table in his house. They're consecutive numbered tables from Allcox in the same tulip wood. And he said it's really? just it's exactly the same table so in his a, home at Young. But yeah. he's got no one to play against. 
Well, he can just play by himself. And yep. look, we're giving credit to Billiards, but the biggest credit of all, I think, is it's the best game you can play by yourself. Mm. It's like a game. It's pool, snooker, you sort of need that to and fro situation. Yes, yes. But in Billiards, you can, it's very similar to a match. You've, yes. And you get that more reward for practising and you get the enjoyment. Well, the truth is Peter's been playing by himself for the last 15 minutes, hasn't he? That's true. But to practice it, it's great. I'm, ooh. Ooh. Oh. oh. What? He couldn't possibly say something. He did. 198. Oh, he did still. It's a ball flying cross. One of the best shots of the tournament. That's for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And uh, deserves all the uh, applause he gets. Fantastic Unbelievable shot. shot. Come on, what he should do now is play it again. <laughs> <laughs> he's got it on the repeater line. Why yeah. not? No, he's going to stun it across this time. Yes. But, Which uh, is what we thought he was going to do last yeah, time. Yeah, but, it it, but for uh, the uninitiated, the line crossing. Um, if he did do that, it would have been a foul shot. So yes. Fantastic shot by Peter Gilchrist. Um, I would dare to say that's the that's shot the that shot wins, wins in the, the cha tournament. championship. Yeah. Well, and, and you're right, you're at the 15-minute mark. Our gap now is 250. We're now getting into the realms of mathematical possibilities and, uh, and time. We think our uh, on-screen match timer is close, closely synchronised to the clock in the arena. It might be out by a few seconds. It doesn't appear that a few seconds are going to be terribly relevant in this context. Well, don't say that because no. one mistake and this could be it. Oh, no, That's he's right. landed. Oh. That's right. We say this with Nathway who's standing behind you. Hasn't he gone yet? Is <laughs> Why isn't he going? Why isn't he going? He's yeah. bedeviling you. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I've, got, I've been playing that long. I get these ghosts from the past, but <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I'm going to come and, I'm gonna come and back and get you. I get him. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Myanmar. Now I've got a reason. <laughs> Money match in Myanmar. Oh, I have to practice. But anyway, let's get back to the serious situation that it is. There's a world championship on the line and Gilchrist is playing so well under the pressure of the situation. Uh, it's great to see. He's formerly from England, now mm -hmm. a Singapore citizen. That's a big change in... Uh, in lifestyle, I can vouch for that. Before he was the national coach, Singapore, I was. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a different climate, different situation, so well done to him. And uh, I've just got to tell you, it's standing room only, eight to 10 deep, up the top of the stands there. Um, and nobody, you know, at the back, it's so hard to see the table even but it's such a great atmosphere when you're Fantastic in that situation atmosphere. you know you've got a small venue lots yep. of people you it's like the football it's there. like the football it's the crowd. opposite to the football except because you can't atmosphere. hear a pin drop yeah. Yeah. and everybody is aware i mean what we don't want is a mobile phone to go off at this stage but um our our tournament administration manager has just given us a little sign saying billiards is back well, in my view, it never went away, but certainly uh, the, the the crowd is back. And uh, I think if we can turn on this kind of spectacle with the top players playing uh, the best billiards we've seen in this country in many, many, many a long year, um, yeah, uh, it's it's worth coming out to see this. The, well, the, the live atmosphere is fabulous. Yeah, look, it, it continues the tradition in the program which Don Richter had a lot to do with. It talks about the tradition yes. in Melbourne. Yes. Uh, we've had leagues here all, all my life and 100 years before that. Yes. Uh, and it just proves that Melbourne is the sporting capital of the world, as I'll we always up, tell you. Yeah, we know you, that. I know you constantly it's, tell me that, it's but, and I hate it when you keep proving it. And it's... And it's the most livable city in the world as well. So, yes. and that is Look, why Robbie, I'm not is, living in Singapore. Sorry, it Peter. is certainly <laughs> the most certainly the most livable city south of Sydney. <laughs> no, it is. I believe e that economic. Anyway, we won't argue about this. Let's get on with the this. The state of Victoria has sponsored this, 
and I'm saying it, and it's economic facts. that's good facts. enough for me. That's so, good enough for me. So don't worry about that. 12 minutes, 15 seconds, still doable, but getting harder and harder. Yeah. And, you know, it's so far. I've been in this situation. I've been runner-up in the World Championship. You can't do it. You're just sitting there. You've tried your best, not just before, at the tournament, but for months before to practice, and there's nothing you can do, and you've got no. to sit it out. It's it's uh, a bit cruel, really. Yes. Now that kiss has gone wrong for well, Pierre. So there's still some hope. Not much. There's a thin in off the white, but it promotes the white into not a great place on the table. He's still got the red in workable position. Yeah. So I think he's just. No, he wants no, he to wants play to the screw cannon, yes, and it, it won't it matter if he just. He might take a bit of time on this too. Just yes. For no, the, he doesn't. He doesn't no. do that. Yeah, it's actually not that far from half ball. From half ball, yeah. Bit of side, bit thinner. Bit of left, bit yeah. of left. And no problem. Now the pockets are getting bigger and bigger. Yes. Uh, metaphorically. Sorry, his arms are crossed. Yeah. He's sitting back. Watching. Now, it would be fair to say that Sora have had the run of the ball early on um, for a long time. In the first half of the match, Peter came <coughs> to the table and was facing nothing at all. But when he left the table on a failed shot, he'd leave red over the bag and uh, a half ball off the white. Um, so uh, probably just desserts here. Peter started to get the run of the ball in the second half uh, and has taken advantage of it. Yeah, well, that's why we have a final for five hours. So yes. the, the rub of the green can even out. It's not like the old days where Walt Lindrum played for two weeks. No chance of any luck there. But, no. but you know, any shorter, any short, you know, two hours, two and a half hours, it can be the luck of the, the rolls of yes. the green yes. to some extent. You've still yes. got to play well. But yes. when it gets this long... Uh, there's not much uh, you can do except say the better man won normally on yes. the day. I think the lead has changed hands perhaps four or five times during the match. I know they crossed at 600, they crossed at 900. Yeah. And this is the first time in the entire match that Peter's been dominantly in front and has certainly chosen the right time to do that. It's been a great seesaw battle in that regard. Yep. Uh, it's been a great final. I mean, you can't expect them to be all really close. And no. after nearly five hours for Qatari to still be in the game, you know, till the last yep. 10 minutes ago, yes. that's close. That's close. So 252 break. Peter saving his best to last. This is the highest break, I think, of his during this uh, final. Uh, difference now approaching 300, nine minutes on the clock. Yeah. We That's call all, it, folks. We call it and say Peter Gilchrist is about to become the 2019 World Billiards Champion for a fourth time, I think, Robbie. I think so, and I, um, I know one thing. Eclipsing you by one. <laughs> oh, thank you. What's that? There's people behind me on the side oh, no, of me. What's going on? <laughs> I thought you were like me. But anyway, the real thing is in Singapore, they'll yes. be very happy. Yes. And I'm not sure. I think Peter will be even more happy here because I think he'll probably get a bonus from the government that he probably. wins the world championship. Probably. So um, in that regard, uh, he's a very happy man. Let's just talk about the legitimacy of this title. Uh, you've got um, two players here who've been eliminated who are regarded as... Uh, Absolutely world class, being Mike Russell and Pankaj Advani. Very true. Uh, this is a very, very legitimate win for Peter. Uh, those two are not at every tournament, uh, and to come along here and play amongst the best and be the best. Um, I will. Uh, I've got to say. I think I this is his greatest win. It could well be. He beat. I think he beat Russell in the he did early. Beat one. Yep. In the, I was there, and I lost in the semis in India. Uh, but, you know, I give him full credit. Peter does play the most tournaments. Yes. And he even says, when he does an exhibition or something, I've been there, and he says, oh, I'm number one ranking, but it's only on participation. Yes. But now he can really say that he is the best in the world. Yes, he and, can. Uh, this is very you know, I give him full credit for that. Yep. We've had our differences. <laughs> but, Have you? But, no, really. I can't imagine no, that. But He's a delightful no, man. I'm only so are joking. You. But... The thing is, that's all credit to him in both yep. aspects. Absolutely. Now, 
So there's a couple of hundred in the room, that's for sure. And uh, Wayne Carey, the Oceana champion yes, in the room. Who, who clocks in at five foot two, I think. Yeah, he's actually standing on a chair to see the table. Now, he's got to be careful here. I, look, I work for the RACV, OH&S. Somebody tell him to get off, right? Yeah, tell him to get off. That's right. It'll, but he's an, he's it'll a, be on your account if he, if he falls. <laughs> Not quite, but <laughs> <laughs> so I've done my duty. But look at this. All systems go for Peter Gilchrist. Uh, smoothest queuing you can get, really. So, yes. so Look how low he addresses the ball. I mean, uh, yeah, matches over, but he, he, he habitually addresses the ball low and then raises his front hand. His fingers rise up as he hits the ball if he's looking to play top. So, speed. anyway, another ball climb crossing. This one's more of a... Uh, conventional one, yes, no, that's conventional right. one. Yeah. So <coughs> plays no risk. Now it'd be nice to see him finish with an unfinished break, really. Yes. Um, so he's gonna. He's tried to get under it. He might. Oh, doesn't want that to drop. Yeah, but it's, it's all going. It's a slip through cannon here, isn't it? Uh, close, but whatever it is, it's a cannon, and uh, he can continue to 300 with a bit of luck for, on his behalf. Spare a thought for Qatari again. All yep. he can do is sit there. Yep. But I think you'll appreciate the skill of Gilchrist, and uh, oh, he knows he's been very look. He's been very good all week, and he's the defending champion. Always hard to come back and win another one. And of course, uh, he's had a few of them. Straight, straight. Oh, this is tricky. It's a bit ugly. Exhibition shot. He might have a thin in off here. Three hundred even for Peter. He's got not a, liking one it. Way Bites the lip. Not easy now, but I don't think he'll be too worried. There's cannons on, difficult ones, off the side cushion. It's just looking at the kiss cannon, but that's too close. Now, Robbie, somebody on our feed has said, "Who's speaking? His voice is very relaxing." And they said. That's Robbie Fulbright. Beautiful. So I have to tell you that Robbie is also a wonderful guy. Uh, and he is. He, you are. And uh, he does have a beautiful, relaxing voice. And knows a little bit about billiards as well. Just a little bit. You did say that. I'll send him a card. But, um, yeah, I've been... Yeah, well, that's nice of him. And... And Dale Kennedy uh, oh, decides that he's now barracking for Gilchrist. <laughs> now, not, not very brave. <laughs> not very brave, Dale. You can do better than that. <laughs> so, Katari's at the end. Oh, he's gone in off. That sums it up. He didn't yes. want to go in off there. Not with the yellow in Bork. I think Ian just might try and show off with a long pot here, maybe. Yes. He knows it's all over. He's not too bothered. And unfortunately, he's not going to go off with a bang there, but he shouldn't be too disappointed. He will be, but yes. great effort. He beat uh, Pankaj earlier on, and, and uh, he wasn't uh, probably yeah. favourite in that. No, he showed, I, I, but I he proved a point. Yes, he did prove a point, and I think in a lot of ways that that will play better in India than than actually uh, 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 playing against Peter or, or Mike or Matthew. Well, that's um, right. Pankaj is a, a, a genuine superhero in India. And again, that's a very, very legitimate min win for Surav. So he's just going to try and play out this, but uh, to no avail. He's certainly not in the hunt. But uh, I think his dad, hello Manoj, haven't seen you for years, will be still very proud of him. Yes, he will um, be. As will the Indian nation. Uh, he has fought valiantly in this and he has uh, been nothing but a thorough gentleman for the entire match. He's been a credit to his country and his family. Uh, out of position again, and too much side. 
I suppose it's fitting if Gilchrist finishes on the table. And there's part of the large crowd, a couple of hundred in the room. As we said, Billiards is back. Uh, some young faces, some faces that we haven't seen at tournaments for quite a while. Um, and Thank they're you, all Dan. enjoying it. Yeah, I'm getting That's dizzy, his highly Dan. paid, highly yeah. paid cameraman there. <laughs> But it was a good overall view. Oh, here we go. And, uh, Peter queuing under the body. Yeah, not Mike many Williams. people can do that unless well, you're six foot seven. That's right. Uh, you need hips higher than the table. And we to must do that. mention that um, Peter's dad, Frank, is here. Yes. So that's a uh, extra fillet for uh, the Gilchrist family. Yes, Frank's uh, an ex-fireman in Middlesbrough, and that's where Peter learnt to play, was on the fire station billiard table. Okay. Of course, they're sitting around waiting for the next fire to happen, or hoping yeah. it doesn't happen. They need something to do, so so billiards was the answer. So Peter used to sneak in with his dad and knock the billiard balls around. Right. Yeah. People love that long Jenny. It's a beautiful shot. Yes. So... Roughly a minute to go. The clock, we're not sure how accurate it is. We're, uh, the real time of the match is on the tournament table. So we can't see that, but it's certainly not long. And oh, trick shots now by Peter Gilchrist. Let's see. Not quite. That wasn't a foul shot, so that's a good trick in itself. Sort of smiles. Might have a little in off here, not easy, but. Oh no, nice hard nice ball. Shot. Peter, as you said, is a very nice person, giving him a shot near the end. <laughs> but don't worry, he's got that competitive streak or he wouldn't be this good. He will be back and he's giving away a couple of decades to Peter, who's uh, in his 50s now. So Saurav so is going to be around uh, a long time after Peter is uh, retired. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. We've got the winner here. Thank you. And you can see the crowd. They really show their respect to the two players and the referees from over. You can see the beautiful trophy on the side there. The old world trophy in court, really. Yes. Earlier than Wimbledon and the British the Open. Zern and the Claret Jump. So it's an honour to be here. Thanks for having us. Well done, Dan, uh, on the on the coverage, well done to the organisers, well done to the RACV, and well done to the Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Rob. Paul Cosgriff is standing behind there. He's the head of referees for this tournament. You can see in the background the matching chiffonier, which matches this table, and David Pitt was telling us the story about that earlier on, story in its own right. From my personal point of view, I uh, have a number of people I'd like to thank. Uh, I'd like to thank especially the World And we'll sign off and say goodbye, and hopefully we'll do it all again and sometime and soon. Thank you. Work, uh, to get us to where we are today. And uh, could I ask for a round of applause for all? I have uh, a personal vote of thanks to, you, to uh, all the referees that have performed throughout the uh, week. Uh, we couldn't do anything without the referees and the commitment that they've shown has been enormous. Uh, the effort that's been made by people to travel internationally and interstate to be here uh, is really quite phenomenal and we're extremely grateful for that. And uh, I'd especially like to thank uh, our referee for the final, Kim Ivan. Thank yeah. you. Um, this has been an extremely successful championship. Uh, in the words of one Antonio Samaranch, the best ever! Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, most of that is due not just to the work that people do in terms of presenting this, etc., but in the manner in which everything about this championship has been disseminated to the world. Uh, I'm extremely grateful to uh, Neville Moore for all of his work with the Pro Score and having the electronic scoreboards and then having them linked into the uh, streaming that was also provided, not just by Neville, but also by Dan Lynch. And to those people, we are extremely grateful because it's our public per uh, perception that it is going to make sure that the sport grows and develops over the time. So thank you very much. Could I uh, pray 
your attention for the Managing Director of World Billiards Limited, Jason Colbrook. Firstly, I'd like to thank the crowd. Um, we've got a, a fantastically large crowd, you know, for a billiards tournament. Uh, it would be a very long time before we've had this many people at a billiards tournament. But not just a great crowd, but a knowledgeable crowd. The crowd understood the shots and what was going on and the applause of this. Excellent. I'm sure the players thoroughly enjoyed having such a, a large and um, knowledgeable crowd. Thank you for all of you coming. It really makes the event. Uh, to the players for putting on such a fantastic final. This was a repeat of last year's final. Uh, Peter was keen to get his revenge. But a fantastic final. Very absorbing. A promoter's dream to come into the final hour with the match in the balance. So um, you, you guys put on a great show. It was a really, really good time. Well done, both of you. There were some truly excellent players who didn't make the final. So it's a credit to you too that uh, you've such a class of you. Yourself. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, Paul's covered a lot of things. Oh, the major sponsors. Um, you know, we've just endeavour life and care and the sponsors for the other events, the uh, Allcox, the RACB Club, the, it's just a, a lot goes into these events and without such a, an excellent group of sponsors it wouldn't have happened. The Allcox have put in an enormous amount of work this week getting the tables up to, you know, to perfect condition. Uh, I'm sure I'll forget a number of the sponsors, but to all the sponsors, thank you for your support for the event. The RACB Club for providing this facility. It's a big ask that this club's got 30,000 members and we had to say to the members, you can't use your booted room for a couple of weeks. So um, we, I didn't speak to them all personally, but <laughs> it, it's, we really appreciate their support. It's fantastic. So to, if anyone is here representing the RACB club, please pass on to your committee and your management the appreciation of the, the World Billiards community. It's fantastic. The biggest thing you goes to the... Australian Beers and Snooker Council. Um, these events, when we move them internationally, they need a country to put their hand up and say, yes, please, we want it, and we're going to do a good job of it. And the Australian Beers and Snooker Council was very early on board to support this event. They've worked tirelessly. Every person on that report, the Australian Beers and Snooker Council, the subcommittee they formed to run this event, there has been no level of support that World Beers could have asked for that has not been provided. Uh, I believe the Australian Beards and Snooker Council has really put on just an exceptionally uh, fine Beards event. And so to, to, to conduct the ceremonies from here on, I'd like to introduce Frank Jewett, President of the Australian Beards and Snooker Council. Uh, Jason, first of all, I'd just like to reiterate uh, Thanks to the RACB Club, what a fantastic venue. Um, as uh, Paul said, it's, it's the best in the world. And for these players to come along and get the accolades of the players alone, that speaks volume of the conditions and the club. And to the RACB Club, thank you very much indeed. Uh, to the players, guys, what a spectacle. Huh? I mean, we've been privileged to the best goodies that I've ever seen this last week. And the final, um, absolutely amazing. To both players, congratulations. Um, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes that went into this event. Um, more so uh, getting the two world bodies together. That was a big task. Uh, there's a lot of politics involved in the sport. And uh, this, uh, well, this is a World Billiard uh, event, but uh, in the past, uh, we haven't had the privilege of playing the IBSF and the World Billiards together. But through a lot of hard work and a lot of persuasion, uh, we actually did it this year. And we've got a two-year contract or an agreement with the World Billiards and the IBSF to run this again for the next year. So hopefully, if it's successful again next year as this one was, uh, we can continue on. But the biggest thing is, is not the politics that's involved in the sport, but the politics hurt the sport, and it's these guys that suffer. The, the guys that really want to play billiards, 
Um, I can honestly say that if the IBSF didn't uh, put their uh, uh, sanctions and uh, support behind this event, Surat wouldn't have come. Is that correct, Surat? Because of all the politics that's involved. And it's just great to have these players here. So congratulations to both parties, uh, the IBSF and the WPBSA, or World Business Limited, uh, to get together on this occasion uh, to give us what we have just experienced. Thanks to both of them. I would like to thank all the referees. I, I don't want to go over old hat, but uh, you know these guys do an absolutely fantastic job. And uh, to be here all week, they give up their time. Uh, it's not an easy job. And to Kim to do the final, uh, you know the players are here for five hours, but they get a break. They go and sit down. Uh, Kim's concentrating all the time, and she did a fantastic job. <laughs> So we'll move on from here. Um, I'll just, uh, in, in, well, finally, I'd just like to thank the organising committee, Barry Jenner and his crew. Um, Barry was uh, unknown up until 18 months ago. Uh, we conned him in Adelaide to uh, to join the Billions and Snooker Association in Adelaide. Um, he took over a few things there. Um, he's worked tirelessly with his. Uh, World Championship Organising Committee and to Barry and the committee, thank you very much guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're down to the, uh, the presentation. Thank you Frank. I'll uh, just ask my bikini plate assistant to help provide for <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> um, Frank, could I ask you please to present the runners-up trophy and certificate to Saraf Gatari. And snooker, of course, but you know billiards. Uh, I emphasize on billiards, so um, it's it's just incredible. I, I just wish I had a better run in the final, but you know it's all in the game. So I I am going to be back soon whenever there's an event next time. Congratulations! And I think all of you are going to go from strength to strength from here, and hope to see you very soon. Thank you.
major sponsors of the sport to create a unified world championship for the first time. That was tremendously important in it is becoming a major sport and as we reunify the World Championship this year again, hopefully we'll see the sport grow and do better and better. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to thank uh, the ABFC board, my then fellow board members, for asking me to put together the bid for Australia's post this event and asking me to set up the structures and the organising committee and running the organising committee through the early stages. The, the trophy of uh, the original competition had a rule that if you won the event and retained the trophy, defended it for five consecutive years, you could keep it. <laughs> A man called John Roberts Jr. managed to do that, and that's why the trophy is now referred to as the John Roberts Trophy. <laughs> it went into his family and stayed in the family for a long time, and eventually they donated the trophy back to the sport, so it's completed a full circle of we re reunify our championship, the symbol of the unity of our sport is here today. Seen. The last time Australia hosted the World Professional Figure Championship, exactly 30 years ago, you were a very young man and you were a surprise performer. You got to the final win. You've been at the pinnacle of the sport ever since. <clears throat> Throughout that period, you've acted with grace and charm and become a universally loved figure. You once said you know, in a speech of another sportsman, no sport could wish for a better ambassador. Those words hit me perfectly. This week you've both played magnificently. Sarah, you've been champion after champion after champion to get here. Peter, in the semi-final and the final, you had absolutely top class opponents, they were close matches and the pressure was on the last hour, you pulled out the contract. It's a magnificent achievement. I congratulate you. I want you to accept the John Roberts trophy.
So I'm, I'm sure we'll just be delighted that we've both got to the final anyway. And uh, I repeated last year was was good. You got me last year. I got you this year. You can get me next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks to all of the uh, organising committee. I'll go here. Um, yeah, all the organising committee. Uh, a couple have, have gone back home already. I think uh, Steve Cowie, who was the tournament director, he's done a tremendous job. Um, all of the referees. We even had a, uh, not just the, the, the lady in the final, she was tremendous, uh, came, didn't put a foot wrong, never does, uh, great referee. Uh, but we also had one from Singapore as well, uh, Lily Yu, which, which was uh, quite unique, so that was, uh, that was quite good, having a, a few female referees. Um, yeah, all the thank yous have been done, uh, so I think it's to the bar now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks for being a great crowd and hopefully we'll come back next year and the year after and the year after. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of things. Um, there's been a magnificent uh, magnum of uh, wine produced uh, by the Hanging Rock Winery and presented to the person who nominated the highest break on each day of the tournament. And today the highest break was 313 and in a classic case of graft corruption and uh, <laughs> things going on in the business. Uh, Robert, who is the winner? Warwick Lotus. Yeah! <laughs> Breaks, there was a, uh, it was also the um, highest break of the uh, tournament that needs to be recognised. And so, could I ask uh, Mr. Mel Wagle uh, to come through and be here to present the prize for the highest break?
And Judy, do you want to say a few words? Uh, firstly, thank you to the organising committee of the uh, World Kids uh, World Kids events. It's been fantastic. Uh, secondly, thank you to Barry, who had to do a bit of arm twisting to get me here um, because I've been thinking I'd play serious minutes. But there you go. I've been playing with this for a little while now.
his way up to Bathurst. This is an extremely hectic weekend. He's managed to not only arrange the final and get everything underway today, but now he's driven up to Bathurst to be there for the great race tomorrow. So um, I'm very pleased that Steve's done that because he took with him one of our referees, Kevin Christie, who had come out from Ireland. And he came for the billiards, but I said to him, if you're going to go anywhere to see a car race, Bathurst. Bathurst is the place to go. So. Uh, being in Australia at the time when the race is on, I think it's a magnificent <coughs> thing that they've been able to get up there. Uh, I hope they have a great day tomorrow. There is a uh, Deputy Tournament Director, and he's come all the way from Scotland, Colin Whitelaw! Um, Simon, is there no medallion for you? Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? You see, Simon uses his own grand advantage to make his own medallions that say, you know, best in the world, some fortune. <laughs> and uh, Anna said uh, thank you to the RACB for letting her practice here. So if ever you've seen a home grand advantage in the world championship, that was it. But our venue manager is Mr. Robert Higgins! to make an announcement. Um, we've had uh, a number of referees that have come through in the state of Victoria, uh, and we've been extremely grateful for the efforts that they put in. Uh, we've obviously had um, some very good referees. We've had referees that have been prepared to travel anywhere to referee, and uh, the classic case of that has been our referee in the final, Kim Ivett. And in recognition of the work that uh, Kim has done for not only us, but the WPBSA and now WBL. Um, she has previously been a class one in snooker, and I'm uh, quite pleased to announce today that Kim Ivett is a class one in billiards. Thank you. Very much. Okay, there was 
was a raffle for the uh, box which has been beautifully presented by uh, Mr. Roger Buckmaster uh, of the balls from the final. And uh, after the winner has uh, been announced and they're able to collect the, the box of balls, we will ask uh, Peter Gilchrist to sign the yellow. And whatever you will like. So you get to sign the white, and Kim, you get to sign the red. Okay, so uh, we'll do that. As soon as we know who the winner of the raffle is, Frank, could you please draw the winning ticket? Have you got mine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got three. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> if anyone's going to ever win anything, it's this guy, Joe Manichi. Oh. <laughs> support us as much as they do uh, in terms of uh, providing not just referees but players in the competition etc and then um, Singapore has been magnificent Peter's been more than willing to come down from Singapore on a number of occasions uh, he's often had another player come with him and then this time he's had Lily Liu come from Singapore as a referee um, we have had a uh, fantastic contingent of referees because we we not only had Kim and Lily, but we also had Alice Wu uh, down from Queensland. And uh, it's terrific to see the women in the refereeing ranks. And if any of the women that um, you know would like to be involved in refereeing, I can assure you it is the best seat in the house to watch the best players in the world. Um, but the event that we ran with the 10 women, all 10 of those women said they really enjoyed billiards and they wanted to play more billiards. And I think that's the best comment that we've heard throughout the whole week, that. Uh, as we go on from here, the billiards game in Australia just continues to go from strength to strength. Uh, Frank, could I ask you to invite everybody to the bar? Yes. Uh, just, just before I move forward, um, I'd just like to uh, uh, say two things. Firstly, uh, I did touch on it before, but uh, we have an agreement in place, uh, the, I'll say we as the IBSF, have an agreement in place with World Billiards uh, for two year, a two year agreement that uh, they both work together for the sake of billiards. Um, I'd like to think we could get the billiards back here again next year. Um, we have a lot of people here and uh, people power uh, makes a big difference. So if you want the billiards here next year, please go to your uh, uh, Victorian Association, let the, uh, the club here know that you thoroughly enjoyed it and you'd like it back again next year because uh, as far as the ABSC go and the um, World Championship Organising Committee, I know they'll be very pleased to do it again next year. But look, you know, I'd like to think that uh, you know, we've set a precedent here and uh, we've, we've set the bar very high uh, for other countries to follow. And uh, if we can have it here next year as well, uh, well then you know, we've really set the bar really high. And uh, I've been involved with uh, a lot of uh, world championships and I can honestly say that this is probably one of the best organised tournaments that I've ever been involved in and one, one certainly the best venue that I've been involved in. And thank you very much and thank you all very much for your support for the game. Yeah. In closing, um, I'd just like to thank Paul Cosgrove for emceeing tonight, uh, his right hand man Robert Higgins, uh, Robert, where are you, mate? Oh, yeah, well, uh, you, you move around a bit, it's hard to find you. But, uh, these two guys are so professional, uh, they bring another uh, 
they lift the level of professionalism to the uh, to the game. And to you two guys, thank you very very much indeed. Before we do close off, uh, Chris Christoffi from the Reverton Group. Chris, did you want to make a presentation? Yeah, I just um, be super, super quick. Suraf actually won one of my events earlier this year, the Reverton Classic. It was the first non victorian to win the event. He liked the potential, so I've actually been one late. Thank you, Professor Davies. I'll support it next year as well. I'm happy to put something towards the world body and I hope you come to the master. Yeah, in the next yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Hopefully we can see you all again next year, but I'm sure that there's other tournaments here that you'll be involved in. And thank you very much for coming along. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.